so today I want to take a minute to show you how I recorded all the songs on my album. I do this because I want to show that even with basic equipment, you can get a decent sound. I was able to get this sound. with this basic equipment. So I'm using my 10-year-old ThinkPad with Windows 10, the 64-bit version. Most dolls or digital audio workstations require a 64-bit operating system. After testing many of the free dolls that are available, I found that Cakewalk by BandLab was the best. It came with a free trial of Melodyne. Melodyne is a pitch shifting software that allows you to manually correct your vocals, but the paid version is $300, and so I'm actually in the process of switching to another plugin called Wavestune, which costs about $40. Everything comes into my laptop into an external sound card, but the only reason that I have this external sound card is because the built in sound card in my laptop only has a microphone input that is mono and I really wanted a stereo sound and so I bought a cheap external sound card. I have three sources that I'm wanting to record, my guitar, my microphone, and my phone. You could actually plug these right into your computer but I put them into my mixer so I don't have to keep changing cables every time I want to record from a different source. So I have my microphone going into the first channel, my guitar going into the second channel, and then channels 3 and 4 get my input from my phone, which is my drum machine. The guitar that I used for the entire album was a basic Ibanez acoustic electric guitar. I have it going through my old DoD Tech 4X guitar processor. But you could actually use, Cakewalk has built-in VSTs or built-in plugins that you could add the distortion, add the compression, add the things that you need to make your guitar sound more rock-like. On my guitar pedal, I am adding some reverb. Some compression. some distortion and I boost my low end EQ and pull back some of the high end EQ. My microphone is a Shure SM48S, which is actually the lower end version or cheaper version of the SM58. I do have a condenser microphone, but my room has too much noise from traffic and the air conditioner, and so it picks up too much sound, so I've gone with the stage mic instead of a more sensitive condenser microphone. For my drum, I'm using an app called Drummer Friend HD, which is a few dollars on the App Store. The guy who made it used real drum samples that he recorded and then made this system where you get to put those sounds together just like a drum machine would. What I really like about this program is that it's on my phone and I can connect a USB foot switch to my phone and control it to start and stop the drum beat so when I'm doing worship at church I can actually use this app as my drummer. Using a foot switch with Drummer Friend HD is almost the same result as having a Beat Buddy, except the Beat Buddy costs $300, and if you want to edit the drum beats in a Beat Buddy, you need to use a computer. But with the Drummer Friend HD app, you can actually edit it inside the app, so if you're at your venue and you want to change the drum beat, you can just do it on the spot. You don't need to open up or pull up your computer. The sound quality samples is definitely better on the Beat Buddy, I will say, but for a simple, cheaper solution, I would say this Drummer Friend HD and a foot switch actually works quite well. For monitoring while I was recording, I used a cheap pair of closed ear headphones, which literally means they cover your ears, unlike earbuds which sit inside your ears. If you use earbuds, then the sound can come out of them and into your microphone and you get some bleed from your recording. I set up direct monitoring for my line in to my headphones rather than monitoring through Cakewalk or through your doll. 
If you do that, you'll get latency or a delay in what you're hearing and that will cause your timing to get off very quickly. I had about a 50 or 60 millisecond delay in recording and so I set up a shortcut on my keyboard with Cakewalk to shift the recording 10 milliseconds. After I recorded, I just pushed that key five times and I'm good to go. That's a quick overview of the equipment that I used to record the music on my album. In part two, I'm going to be recording part of one of the songs from start to finish just so you can see the entire process. If you like this video and found it interesting, please do subscribe, leave comments or questions below, and thanks for watching.